So the plausible explanation here is that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu agreed with Tamim al-Dari that what I have told you in other places that I agree with him is that the Dajjal has different human vessels as a host until he acquires the last description of what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi was saying. The Dajjal's description, everyone in the videos and in different uh, writings has given the Dajjal's descriptions according to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But nobody ever asked as to why is the description important. We hear and we obey. This is for sure, this is what we do. And we believe, Amantu Billahi wa Rasulihi. We believe in Allah and His Messenger. But what is the reason and what are some of the understandings of why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave this description. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, Inna Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala laysa bi'awwara ala inna masih al-dajjal awwaru ayn al-yumna ka'anna aynahu anabatun taniya. That Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said that Allah glorified be he is not awwar, is not one-eyed. But verily the Masih al-dajjal the imposter, the anointed deceiver, he is the one who is one-eyed and his right eye is defective. Not only defective, it's like a grape that's protruding. There are many, many examples of the Dajjal that the Messenger of Allah Wasallam gave. But look at another hadith that he also said in it that not only that he's one-eyed, but he said Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is not one-eyed and that you will never see Allah before you die. So he gave you these two descriptions that no other prophets have given. Other prophets, peace be upon them, have given that the Dajjal is coming. Everyone, if you look at the Christians, if you look at the Jews, if you, everyone's waiting for this deceiver, this imposter. So Rasulullah ﷺ gave two poignant examples and descriptions of the Dajjal himself. That he's one-eyed, that you will never be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before you die because he's going to trick you to say that I'm Lord, I'm Allah, because first he's going to say I'm the Prophet. And then after that, he will say I'm God. Do not be tricked by his deception that he is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is just an imposter. He is blind, he has spiritual depth perception. Naqis, like he is devoid of or bereft of this spiritual depth perception. He doesn't have farasa, he cannot see deep into spirituality. And plus, he has physical depth perception problems. But this depth perception where you see on the dollar bill that the pyramid is there, it's three dimensional and there's a small space and then there's this eye and out of chaos it says, will come order. And that's what the Dajjal wants to bring out of chaos, his order. We have to be able to understand why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned of the Dajjal that he's one-eyed. No other prophet gave that description for the believers to recognize that he will have that one eye missing or, or defective in, in one eye. So it is important that we remember that. Rasulullah said, and I remind you again so that we may be able to ask the questions. مَا بَيْنَ خَلْقِ Adam. إِلَىٰ قِيَامِ السَّعَىٰ خَلْقُ أَكْبَرُ مِنَ الدَّجَّالِ That what is between the, the creation of Adam, peace be upon him, till the day of judgment, no bigger creation than the Dajjal. Why, why did he say that? Did we ever ask? We just read the things and we just, just leave it because right now it's, it's beyond our understanding, we throw it away. No. Why did the Messenger of Allah Wasallam said that? Why did he depict the Dajjal himself? Why did he point this out? Because he's the most impactful, right? He is the most one that will give you the shock, the clash, the consequence, the ramification. He is the one who's going to disturb and perturb you. He's going to jar your senses. He's going to have the after effect on your faith that no other thing has ever had. From the time of Adam till now. Meaning this Dajjal was present from the time of Adam salam, to Musa, to Ibrahim, to Isa, to, to Muhammad wasallam. Peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of them. That he is a foe and he is an adversary. He will have the most effect. 
So it is not a joke, meaning to say that this Dajjal has been working his, his deception for many, 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 many thousands of years. And it's coming to the culmination. That's why the last of the Prophet ﷺ said that he's one-eyed and that you will not see Allah before you die. Meaning be very careful not to fall into the trap that he's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We spoke of it in the last Jum'ah that how he will deceive Every prophet warned of the Dajjal. The question, what was the purpose that if he only existed at the end of the time? What was the purpose of that? Meaning to say that he had to be there. And that's why his workings are always there. That's why there's always a tussle between good and evil. Between spirituality and, and deadness of the heart. There's always a tussle. Tamim ad dari it's a famous hadith. Everyone quotes it. So we'll quote a bit of it. But why we will quote it to note why the Messenger of Allah actually said that. He said, Haddathani hadithan wafaq al ladhi kuntu haddithukum anil masih al dajjal haddathani. Meaning, he called him Masih al dajjal, meaning he is the anointed one, but he is the deceiver of the anointed. Because he always came, even in the dream of the Messenger of Allah, he was behind Masih ibn Maryam, he was behind him. Whatever Masih ibn Maryam was doing, meaning Jesus, peace be upon him, was doing, he was behind him. He saw him and described him. And so he said in this hadith, he said, Haddathani, meaning to say what the hadith that came to me, wafiqa, meaning that I am in agreement with Tamim al dari radiallahu an, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, alladhi kuntu. The one that I actually already told you about, meaning it is in the same footing. So it becomes hadith of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, at the end. And another one in this one is in Abi Dawood. You will see he said, Yanzu fima bayna samai wal ard. This person who is shackled, who's hairy, huh? Yanzu, that he is leaping from the heavens and the earth. And it's great, it's sahih. In Abi Dawood. Nobody questioned this guy is jumping up and down. Was Samai wal Ard? Rasulullah he said, Ra'ay to who? Qat to Khalqan, wa shadduhu, withaqan, majmu'atun yadahu ila unuki. That he was a strong, this gigantic figure, strong, strapping, and that his hands were tied to his neck. مَا بَيْنَ رُكْبَتَيْهِ لَا كَعْبَيْهِ بِالْحَدِيدِ That his legs were all chained up. And when they met, they met Al-Jassasa. She said, go to that palace. So what was this? The ulama tried to explain. عَلَمْ مِثَال Meaning it's a different dimension that Tamim al-Dari was speaking about. Why did I actually bring this? Both are sahih hadith. Both are there as authentic. When he was questioned, who are you? He said, Inni ana masih, ushiku an yudhana li fil khuruj. I am the Messiah because the, the one who is the imposter is not going to say, I am the imposter. So he said, I am the Messiah. I am seeking permission to go out. Meaning he hasn't been allowed out, the main Dajjal. Who chained him? Did anybody ask that? Who chained him? Why was he on this island? Why the different descriptions? Why Rasulullah sallallahu said, Wafiqa, that I am in agreement with this description. Why? Did anybody ask these questions? Do we believe in these narrations? Of course, they're graded authentic. Abdullah ibn Umar, ibn Mas'ud, Jabir ibn Abdullah, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, radiallahu anhum. All of them said, Ibn Sayyad, Sayyad with the Saad, that he was the Dajjal. One that said, I swear nine times that he is the Dajjal. One said, I swear ten times and none that he is not. Why did they all swear that Ibn Sayyad was the Dajjal? He was an adolescent and he was a boy. But this hadith over there says that he was a big strapping giant, hairy and shackled. Why? Nobody ever questioned? This boy, Ibn Sayyad, he read the mind of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu because Rasulullah Sallallahu when he told him, believe in me, he didn't. He said, you are the prophet of Ummiyin. You're the, you're the prophet of the unlettered people. 
Rasulullah sallallahu told him, get out, you will never reach your destination. He read the mind of what was in the mind of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he was described as a boy. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ad-Dajjal, Mamsuhul Ain, Maktubun Bayna Aynayhi, Kafir, Thumma Tajahazaha, Kaf, Fa, Ra. Yaqrahu Kullu Muslim. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he said, that the Dajjal is mamsuh al that one eye is wiped and between his eye is kaf, fa and ra, meaning kafir. But he, he spelled out these three words which we will discuss in another, another khutbah inshallah. Therefore this old chained man, big giant in this island, Ibn Sayyad, this adolescent boy. What about the description of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? That he was young, broody complexion, meaning fair. Short, very hairy, woolly, twisted, curly hair, broad chested, heavy set, stocky, wide forehead, pigeon toed, bowed legged, hunchback, blind in the right eye, bulging out like a grape. This was not the description of Ibn Sayyad. So the plausible explanation here is that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu agreed with Tamim and Dari that what I have told you in other places that I agree with him, is that the Dajjal has different human vessels as a host, demonic possession, until he acquires the last description of what the Messenger of Allah Wasallam was saying. How does this entity live on throughout the ages? Allah knows, Allah gave him that. And there's many other things actually to go with it, but for us, brothers and sisters, the Dajjal is real because the Messenger of Allah Wasallam described it. His minions and his myrmidons, all of these people that follow him and the ones that will follow him, that's going to come to reality and this already has. But what we have to do, you and I, we have to actually get our prayers down. We have to, we have to be having an understanding of our deen. We can't let every single thing shake our deen, fall off the bandwagon every time a little thing happens in our lives. We let our family disintegrate. We allow every garbage to enter our house. We have to be the ones who are the protector of our own faiths because these things not only Rasulullah gave us as hints and inclinations and as descriptions, not for just for reading as like a novel, but something that will happen occurring and that will have the greatest impact in our lives.